Okay, picking up where we left off with Malacostricans, the generalized body plan. <coughs> and this is um, that same di uh, the uh, diagram that we have, um, just the same as all the other phyla, where you if you can learn this diagram, you're a good portion of the way towards knowing what you need to know about arthropods and recognizing them and the general body features. Okay, so with uh, arthropods, with the... Uh, crustaceans, as we talked about before, they have the two body segments. Essentially, you have the um, abdomen, and then you have the cephalothorax. So, the cephalothorax is covered by one big covering, one big sheet of the exoskeleton, one plate of it, and it's known as the carapace. You'll sometimes see something referred to as the lower carapace in crabs, crayfish, but usually those ones are uh, uh, divided into multiple uh, plates that are fused together to make a, a one big plate. Well, this is the sort of like their suit of armor, and this will be one chunk of the suit of armor. This is another, but covering the whole cephalothorax is one big carapace. Um, the legs on the abdomen of the um, of these malacotricans are usually adapted for swimming, holding eggs, um, but generally not for walking. Okay, and these ones are known as pleopods. So pleopods are the the legs on the abdomen, and then we have the periopods which are the walking legs on the cephalothorax that come from the cephalothorax. Sometimes they're also referred to as thoracic appendages. Okay, and then what we have making the uh, swimming tail of a crayfish or a shrimp is a central spike called the telson, and then on each side of it two little wing flaps um, which are called uropods. Then we have um, three sets, three pairs, one on each, uh, three on each side, which makes six individual um, maxillipeds. Okay, so these three pairs of maxil, three pairs of maxillipeds, are used for manipulating food. The maxillipeds are used for manipulating food. They bring it to the mouth and these things have a big uh, a set of mandibles which are um, teeth essentially that grind together and chew the food up. Um, they then have antennas and antennules. So the two sets of antenna, there's the one, there's the other, and um, we're not too worried about the rostrum. Uh, but the compound eye is uh, very much like an insect eye. Okay, lots and lots of different um, light-sensitive areas, not really uh, uh, designed like our eyes with um, lenses that can change shape in order to fix at or focus at different focal lengths. But they pretty much um, are fixed focus. But there may be different patches that are fixed onto different lengths. So they've got a compound eye, sometimes on a stalk, sometimes not. They've got the two body segments with the telson uropod, the pleopods on coming off the abdomen, the periopods, which are the walking legs, the maxillipeds, which are the um, are for used for manipulating food, and the antennas. So you can see all of the different appendages along the body length there. All right. So again, we. As we talked about before, you're not going to be um, responsible for most of these superorders and the orders that we're going to go into after this, but um, you can look at these and see how they have very similar body plans across all of the different um, uh, malacostricans and notice the same features coming up in, over and over again in the, mal in the um, crustaceans. Okay, so you've got two antennas, two pairs of antennas, one, two, and these are hoplocarida, um, 
mantis shrimps, okay? So uh, they are fast-moving ambush predators, and they live generally in holes in the substrate. And as we talked about in class, you can dive between Rabbit Island and Shark Alley, and you'll find lots and lots of holes about the size of an old um, 50-cent piece, so fairly wide diameter with these things uh, poking out. But they're very, very stealthy, so you have to be, um, you have to be quite... Um, slow moving and uh, slow uh, acting if you want to see these things uh, coming out of their holes. And it doesn't hurt to bait them. Okay, so mantis shrimps um, usually have, well they do, they have a big claw in the front used for hunting. Okay, and uh, can be designed in lots of different ways. You can go to the YouTube uh, videos and the um, uh, in the other you uh, go to the other URLs listed, uh, and uh, you'll find the pistol shrimp and um, snapping shrimp showed. And here is what one of these things looks like. So you'll see they've got the. Um, I'll have to go back here. Just have a, a little quick look. We've got still got the cephalothorax. Okay, it's got a few extra plates. These walking legs over here. Okay, so the cephalothorax it actually has one carapace, the uh, carapace here, a few other plates, and then the abdomen starts. We've got the pleopods, periopods, which are the walking legs, telstrin and telson and uropods, two pairs of antennas. So you've got your jointed legs and your exoskeleton, which uh, defines it as an arthropod. Here we go. We've got that picture of the, of this mantis shrimp, and they can be very, very beautiful. Uh, lots of coloration. The ones we have around here are a little bit browner, but um, tend to be matching the sand that they live within. Okay. So then we've got Malacostracans eucarida, so or Euphausia, Euphausia sea. But you often see these referred to as Euphausid shrimps, and these are the krill. So this is what makes up most of the whale food from the baleen whales. This is what supports all of the uh, the giant biomass of penguins and um, uh, seals and uh, whales down in the Antarctic. And um, uh, also there are some krill, but not as many in the Arctic. But uh, we'll find we have big blooms of these uh, where there are lots and lots of these krills in around. October, no, November, September, you'll see big swarm of these these things with lots of fish feeding on them. And uh, But again, you can see the generalized uh, Malacostrican body plan of the carapace, carapace over the cephalothorax, the abdomen with the pleopods, and the telson and uropod, and, and the krill, the um, periopods, are modified for filtering out uh, phytoplankton and other and also other uh, zooplankton but they filter them out um, and here's an example of how these things go you can see the green phytoplankton in the guts of these things and if you look very closely here you can see how these things have this fine mesh for filtering out these particles this particulate matter and sweeping it to the mandibles to be eaten okay so krill, hugely important in moving um, from phytoplankton up the food chain to the larger stuff. Decapods, okay, these are the crabs, prawns, shrimps, crays, amphipods, isopods, etc. All these things are ones that you'll be quite common with, in term, or quite familiar with. They're, they're very common in the, uh, in the near shore environment. Okay, three pairs of maxillipeds, five pairs of periopods, First periopods are often chelate, making a hinge claw. So, what does chelate mean anyway? This is what chelate means. Okay, this is a chile or a claw, and so it is. The noun is a chile. It can be described. The adjective can be described. This claw, or this appendage, is chelate. That means it has a chile. And here's one that's non-chelate, which doesn't have the, the pincher. Okay, hopefully that's 
uh, apparent then. What that means. Okay, so here is your common decapod, the five uh, walking legs labeled. These are the periapods. Okay, the maxillopeds are up in here, which are very hard to see. And the and pairs of antennas, but we'll see the, more of those um, quite commonly through a lab and other places. Okay. Most male decapods usually have um, their last, or sorry, their, for, their most forward pleopods adapted as copulatory organs. So they're adapted to uh, deliver sperm. And most female decapods brood their eggs attached to their pleopods. So this is when you see a crayfish in berry. It's got its eggs attached to its uh, swimmerettes. Uh, or its legs underneath the abdomen. And generally they have something called a zoea larva. Um, and here is a picture of a crayfish and berry. So this is a uh, freshwater prawn, but uh, you can see that it is uh, carrying its eggs attached to its pleopod, or yeah, to its pleopods um, under, and protects them under the abdomen. And here is a zoea. So you can see these things uh, quite commonly and some uh, usually they're just big enough to see with the naked eye and sometimes when you're diving hanging on the on the line on the ascent line you'll see lots of, of these things uh, going by or you'll find them attached to your wetsuit um, okay so decapods there are two forms the long body forms which are the shrimps lobsters crayfish um, and these are the ones that you're you'll be quite co quite familiar with um, sh the sort of shrimp shrimpy looking things or um, crayfish looking things so they have a long abdomen and uh, they have a um, you know this is where the a lot of, there's a lot of meat in the tail if you have eaten a crayfish before however the crabs have the abdomen reduced and fold it under here. So here's a shrimp um, or a prawn and here's a lobster or, or a crayfish. And so you can still see the cephalothorax and you can see the abdomen okay, right here. So here's the abdomen but in the crab it's just reduced and folded under. So the abdomen is, isn't completely gone, although you might think it is. But when you look at the bottom of it, you can see that it's reduced and folded under. So it's they're essentially like a big uh, cephalothorax and with the abdomen just used only for uh, copulation or carrying the eggs. So here you see the male, um, and here you see the female. <coughs> okay, and so with the female, you can see in the male, you see this is a, an instance of uh, sexual dimorphism, where this one is wide and flat to protect the eggs. This one, no need for all that because uh, it's only for delivering sperm. Okay, here we see dendrobranchiata, which are prawns, also known as shrimp, generally, um, depending on what part of the world you live in. So, uh, we've already been through the generalized plan here of the malacostrican. Okay. Um, so, first three periapods are chelate, usually quite small. Um, abdominal plates overlap. Okay, so these ones overlap neatly. Oh, you could, that's similar, that's just uh, the same as in the crayfish. Alright, so, so we'll go to the carida. Caridia, okay. These are ghost shrimps. Um, all right, and two first two periopods are chelate. And these ones are, usually have um, very long, long, um, big uh, front periopods. These are things like your freshwater prawns uh, that you'll see at the Hooker Falls Prawn Park. Yeah. Alright, so brachyurans, true crabs. This is like uh, what we saw before. Um, 
these are within the decapods, okay? So still within the decapods. Um, so these are the ones with the abdomen reduced and tucked under the thorax. Uh, the first pair of, pe of periopods are chelate and enlarged. There are the chelipeds. Those are the big claws and, claw and crabs. And they've got um, four other pairs of periopods used for walking and sometimes for swimming if you paddle with the paddle crabs. Okay. No uropods, generally. So let's have a look at some of these things. Here is a decorator crab. And it's got these hydroids growing off of it. Lots of uh, little pieces of sponge and algae and things growing off of it. And these things protect themselves by uh, using by taking things and actually making these little gardens, their exoskeletons grow with these little uh, hooks on them. And so they can stick stuff onto their, their bodies, little pieces of algae or these bryozoans or, or hydro, these hydrozoans or you can get bryozoans, you can get sponge growing on top of these things. And so these things uh, are hard to see and also have lots of protection on them from from predators. Okay, here's uh, Ovalippi's catharis, our uh, local paddle crab. And you can see the back swimmer, or those back periopods modified into swimming appendages with the paddles. Here you see the uh, chelipeds, which are the first uh, periopods modified into a big claw. Okay, least crassa, mud crab, and here's another. Um, uh, what, uh, what we call a decorator crab, sorry, with uh, lots of different sponge growing on it. And you can see it over these um, cnidarians so to give you these jewel anemones to give you a little bit of idea of the scale of this thing. And of course, when these things molt and lose their exoskeleton, all of this camouflage is gone with it, and then they have to quickly re establish a garden on top of themselves in order to have that camouflage. Okay, anamurans. So these are hermit crabs, half crabs, and squat lobsters. All right. So the abdomen might be tucked under the thorax, or it could be spiraled to one side. So the half crabs and squat lobsters, they'll be the they'll have the abdomen tucked under the thorax, and then the um, hermit crabs have a, a larger abdomen in the back, but it's usually protected by the uh, by the the shell of a gastropod. All right, so the last periopods reduced is because they hardly really use them um, uh, for walking. They use the front four, and then uh, most everything is reduced in the back because uh, it's not needed since it's protected by the the shell that they're in. Okay, and so here's a picture of what one of these things will look like. All right, so very very armored in the front and here's what they uh, look like in a shell here's a picture of one that's in a glass um, shell so you can see what it what it looks like inside the shell when it's all tucked up in uh, very heavily armored in the front but then almost no armor in the back they, uh, they just don't need to expend the energy on making a shell uh, over here so they don't generally make um, much. Uh, they still have some exoskeleton covering their their posterior their abdomen, but um, very little. Okay, very thin. And so here we go. These are what the, you call a half crab, and this is what you call a, this is what the hermit crabs are. So you'll find these in great abundance in the intertidal zone. Uh, if you turn over rocks and things like that, tending to uh, be scavenging on things in the tide pools. Okay, so then we go to Palinura, which are uh, lobsters. Okay, big, generally large um, uh, front, what do you call it, uh, large antenna. One of the antennas is very large and used as a defensive weapon. Okay, and there's the heavily armored carapace. Okay, um, and no chile on the periopods, except for in the females on the last one. Okay, and then this is another type of ghost shrimp, the Thalassinidae, 
which you can find often in uh, estuaries around here. Okay, ghost shrimps. But again, you can see the same body plan, exoskeleton, jointed appendages, which are the characteristics of arthropods, and then we have the um, carapace over the cephalothorax, the abdomen, there's a telson in the uropods. Okay, so there's the general characteristics of the malacostricans. Okay, now isopods, you do need to know this order, the isopoda, all right, this name. And so um, uh, there's one, essentially there's one characteristic that will always let you know that you're, talk, that you're looking at an isopod, and it looks like they've been squished flat as like a pancake, uh, or but um, not quite as round as a pancake generally, but from the top to the bottom, and that means from the dorsal side to the ventral side, so dorsoventrally, they've been flattened. Okay, so they've got seven pairs of periopods, nearly identical. Um, the pleopods usually uh, adapted very well for swimming and gas exchange, and some, mostly benthic. Some are, um, uh, they, there are very few that are uh, planktonic and some terrestrial ones too. And the terrestrial ones you know as slaters. Okay, so here is a picture of an isopod. You can see how it's kind of flat. You can still see the carapace over the um, over the cephalothorax, okay, and you can still see the abdomen and um, with all of the plates around it, okay. So the abdomen uh, starts about here, one, two, three, and then the telson and uropods, yeah. And uh, so these all go over the over the cephalothorax. But one larger plate here. Still, there's the one antenna and the second antenna. All right. And so you have the still the same characteristics of the um, crustaceans, the arthropods, and the melancostricans. Here are a couple of uh, uh, isopods that we'll see locally. Here's that one that we saw earlier, um, parasitizing the cowfish. Um, and they have lots of different uh, lifestyles. They could be parasitic, scavengers, or grazers. And um, so we'll see quite a few more of those as we go through. Um, and they tend to be very small. These are the, you'll see, But you'll find these things uh, in lots of... Um, Lots of environments, especially if you pick up uh, any chunks of encrusting stuff and you let it sit in uh, an aquarium or tease it apart in an aquarium, you'll find that these things um, are in great abundance and they'll come out of it, but usually hidden. Now this one, we can see this person is uh, jumping, and another word for that is hopping over the sand, so he's a sand hopper, and that's uh, to give you an idea of what amphipods are. So instead of being squished flat from the bottom to the top or dorsal ventrally, these ones are compressed from the two lateral sides, so they're squished laterally. Okay, seven pairs of highly modified periopods, All right, and these are performing different tasks. Like I said, these look like here. And the amphipods also had seven pairs of, uh, of periopods, but these ones will be modified a little bit differently. Um, you'll see that here's the uh, cephalothorax with lots and lots of plates over it, and then the abdomen, okay? And here are what we call, what are generally um, uh, modified for as an escape mechanism. These things, uh, especially the terrestrial ones, uh, will put this underneath, tuck it underneath, and then when they're like that, the uh, sand hoppers, when a prey or when a predator comes along, they'll just flip out. Uh, they'll flip their abdomen up. Uh, they'll extend it out and they'll flip themselves out and they'll jump huge distances. Uh, so it can be hundreds of times their body length. So very uh, 
imagine yourself jumping uh, a couple, two or three or four rugby pitches or more, then that's how long, how far these things can jump relative to their size. Okay, and let's have a few pictures of some of these things because they really are quite amazing. Um, this one, this one's found in the uh, Antarctic, and um, so South Shet South Shetland Islands, South Orkney Islands, South Georgia Islands, uh, and these things can be found from uh, at great depths. So here are some of the other amphipods that we see. Uh, and some of the body weird body shapes of these things, but you can still see the cephalothorax, the two pairs of antenna, compound eyes, abdomen, and the general body plan. Okay, here's a um, uh, a deep water one, another one, a quite deep water um, amphipod, and it's sitting here with a brittle star. Okay, and here is. One sitting on a bryozoan, okay, another amphipod on a bryozoan, and we've got some hydroids here, okay, and here we've got one that's um, mimicking this poisonous gastropod, which is a nudibranch, alright, so here you go, but anyway, here's the telson uropods for, used for um, uh, jumping, okay, modified for this jumping, Escape mechanism from predators, lots of walking legs, two pairs of antenna, cephalothorax, and abdomen. Okay, and so that's amphipods. And that takes us to the end of Malacostrica. Okay, so the end of Malacostricans. And we will next look at Maxillopoda on the next video.